Well, good evening, gang, and welcome to It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, and I'm your host. And to my left and to your right, of course, is the lovely Suzanne Schultz. Hello, Suzanne. Hi, Glenn. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm great. I'm fantastic. I'm so happy uh, that we are here live in the studio. We're coming to you live from our beautiful studio. Be here at, at Eggleston Square at BNN TV, and you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. We're at 617-708-3290. You can give us a call. Tell us what's happening artistically in your life, in your community. If there's anything you want to share with us, please give us a call. We're here to, uh, to spend some time with you, and we appreciate you being here with us. Well, the place is a buzz. Yeah. The place is a buzz. We have uh, a, a legend in, in, in the New England uh, airways and the New England art scene. Uh, the great jo Joyce Kilhawick is in the studio with us tonight. We're very, very proud and happy to have that. Absolutely. Uh, that connection with us. Uh, uh, I can't wait to get her up here. But, I know. Uh, <laughs> don't throw me off. No, no, no. We're not going to do anything like that. <laughs> But uh, but we're, we're we're excited about that. So how you doing? What's going on? Did happy Mother's Day? Thank you. Did you have a nice Mother's Day? I did. I got flowers from Winston and a pizza. A pizza. Yeah, yeah. I got flowers from my son in Chicago and my son in New York sent me a pizza. Oh. So I like both. A New York style pizza. <laughs> uh, a fabulous South End pizza. So <laughs> that's great. He knows his mother. Yes, yeah, okay. so I thought well, that was very sweet. We had uh, the super producer Janice and I had both of our moms with us. My mother's up from West Virginia, of course. She's going home tomorrow. Bye, mom. If I don't see you in the morning, I think I'd probably get up early and say bye to mom. She's, She's been here up. for a while. She's been here yeah. for a couple of months. Every year she comes up and visits and spends some time with us up here in the spring, and it's always great to have her. Yeah. with us and the great Eleanor of course Janice's mom was at the house so we we kind of had a great dinner and, and hung out with each other for the day it was fun very nice yeah. what have you been doing artfully this week what haven't I been doing Amen. artfully yeah. this week yes uh, I have a few new artists who have joined yeah, um, which great. is nice yep. yeah it's always good yeah it's pretty exciting we had a great event on um, Friday night over uh -huh. at 450 Harrison in the South End great. at those artist studios. Yeah, yeah. We took one over. Did you? We did, and it was great. I had a little pre-party at my house, and we had my art. Oh. <gasps> and you're always telling us to turn our phone off. <laughs> hey, this is my daughter calling me and saying, Dad, what are you doing? Sorry, guys. <laughs> I think it's Robert Redford. It might be Bob time. on the phone. He knows you're here. That's what exactly. it is. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> you know, I tell everybody, you know, and, and I guarantee you, it's my kid. Dad, what are you doing? Where are you? Yeah, don't you know I'm a big TV star? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a big TV star, all right. Um, uh, that's great. And you took over a place in the South End. Where? What, what, what gallery were you in? We were in uh, the alternative art space, which is Fernando D. Oliveira's space um, on the third floor over at Harrison Avenue. Uh -huh. And I have a lot of artists who have studios there. And Fernando was lovely enough to let us use the space for First Fridays because... About 10 of my artists donated work to the Fenway Men's Health event, which right. was a great cause and a great event. And um, to thank them, he let them have a show on Friday night. Well, that's fabulous. That's, yeah. that's great. That's great. And How many artists were there? There were 10 artists in that studio, but I have other artists in the building. Well, the South End is starting to gear up, aren't they? I mean, yeah, the ball is starting is, to roll, isn't it? May is the month. Yeah. You know, things yeah. are finally sort of warming up yeah. and you know the weekends now they have the uh you know all, well, all the, the, the fridays thing is one thing but then the open studios are coming in right behind it and right and then they have all that goes on on the weekends they yeah. have music and they have you know people selling well the soho and, thing goes off so. you know i hope to be playing there again this year i played last year and i've submitted to to the people over there that i want to come and play again so oh good we'll see if that happens we set up a nice tent and you know, the four yeah. of us get out there and serenade the, 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 the passing public, which is the, fun. The masses. The masses. Go, it, oh, no, it's a huge, huge thing. Yeah. 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 No, it's a great area. I'm, I'm just thrilled I get to live there. That's, yeah, no, you're very, very so. fortunate. Yeah. You know, it's and, like living in Oz. <laughs> if I go out my front door, it's like Kansas, yeah. you know, on Washington Street. If I go out Harrison Avenue, it's like, ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in Oz. I, so I went think? to a great show Friday night out in Norwood at Perks Coffee House. Uh, the great Bird Mancini were performing. And it's always fun to see Billy Kyle and, and Ruby Bird play. They, uh, they're, a, they're a husband and wife team that have been playing together in, in different rock bands for, whew, 25 years, 25, 30 years they've been playing and performing. And uh, sorry, I probably shouldn't have said how long they've been doing it. But 
They've been at it, and they've been doing a great job. And, uh, and it was great to get got a nice seat. My mom and I went out there for dinner and, and, uh, and heard them. Uh, next, this coming Friday, I'm going to be playing there. I will be at that venue, and uh, we invite everybody to come on out. Uh, it's right in Norwood Center on Washington Street. We'll be doing an, an, early, an early set. We'll play from 8 to 10. Which is which is nice. That's late about 20 for some. me. <laughs> well, you know, we've had a couple of gigs in the last in the last so far this year where you start at 11:30. Now those were the olden days when when it was okay and you didn't have to pop up in the morning to go to school and teach the next day. But so it's been it's been interesting. Well, it's congratulations. Been, uh, thank that sounds you. exciting. No, I'm very excited about it. Uh, I don't play out as often as I used to, so this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. So have you been painting? I haven't heard you talk too much about I ha You know, something I have. I, I've, I've been painting some small pieces, and I've been, I've been doing a lot of work with, ni with my knives and some sand. I'm incorporating a lot more sand into my work. And, right. uh, it's um it's an abstract, you know. I'm I you know I, I I can draw a house, but I'm not that great a realist. But I am an abstract painter. And yeah, there's there's a couple of new pieces. The super producer Janice has got a bunch of new pieces out too. And uh, we're uh, we're hanging right now. We're showing in a place called the Bangkok Cafe. And so our work is hanging there. It'll be coming down soon, right in Rosendale Square. So I'm kind of excited about that. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to take a couple seconds, if I could, just to remind everybody that we're very, very proud of our affiliation with the Boston Main Streets program. Boston Main Streets is an organization in Boston that helps redevelop uh, uh, business districts. Uh, they go, there's about 19 of them around the city, and what they do is they help property owners with the correct demographic that they need for putting the correct business in their storefronts. Uh, they also do a lot of work with the people that are putting the businesses in as far as the aesthetic look, how their how their business looks, their signage, and uh, they do. There's a lot of graphic designers and architects that work with the Main Streets program. The, every community, every little business district around the city has a Main Streets program. There's a Chinatown Main Street. There's a couple of them in Dorchester, East Boston, and what have you. And what they do is there's volunteers from those communities that work on their boards of directors or on their committees that, that help revitalize the business districts. And they, they've done an amazing job down in, in my neck of the woods out in good old Rosendale because uh, years ago, Rosendale wasn't the place you'd go to dinner. It wasn't the place you'd go and, and, and do any of your shopping. But now it's become a destination. And we're very, very proud of the work that, that the, uh, the then city councilor, Tom Menino, did uh, to get those programs into the city. And uh, one of the other uh, uh, aspects of, of the Main Streets program is their promotions committee. And what they do is they run events down in, in, in the different segments of the city. So the farmers markets and the, the little tastes of this and there's different kinds of concerts and little shows that they put on to bring people down to the business districts that may not be familiar with what, what the business districts are all about. So uh, I want to thank them for their, their continuous uh, support of Suzanne and I because we're very, very proud of the job th uh, that they do and we're, we're very, very pleased to be able to come and visit with you once a week and, uh, and they make that all entirely possible. So if you see an event going on and there's someone with a Main Street t-shirt on or, or a staff shirt or something, thank them because they're volunteers, number one, and uh, number two, they're doing it because they love their community just like you do and uh, they're caring about how their environment is and how their business district is so they can raise their families in the kind of atmosphere that is Boston. So uh, thank you for them, for all the work that they do. I want, I want, to, I want to talk a little bit about what you're thinking of, of, of the trend, of, of what we, we should expect this summer. Is there going to be a, a lot more uh, new visual work of people working in, in your crowd? You know, you've got a pretty extensive crowd of people now. Is it painting? Is, is there a lot of uh, sculpture coming back? Is there found art? Yes. Is recyclable stuff? Is there, what, what's coming back? What, what are we looking at out there? A lot of uh, recycled materials, and I do think that people have a newfound appreciation for sculpture. Um, sculpture, I think, has always been a hard sell in New mm. England, mm. and basically um, in the United States in general, or maybe more <coughs> in New England. But I see people being a lot more open to it, mm -hmm. and um, and you know I have some great new sculptors. Well, we've always had Patrick Pierce with yes. this crazy dumpster diving and recycled materials, and Linda Hoffman, and she uses um, fallen trees and bronzes, and mm -hmm. Greg Spitzer does stonework, and he's actually carving in Italy right now. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah, more sculptures. So. That's great, because one of the things that we're adding to the Camp Harborview thing that I do is, is that we're bringing uh, a, a new person on who is a fine artist, but she uses found materials. She's not a dumpster diver as much, you know, but she does use oh, a lot of sea glass and a lot of things from the environment that she in incorporates into her artwork. And it's, it's amazing work. I'm just so happy to have her on board with us out there. Yeah, and it's interesting. I'm working with a client right <coughs> now me. who comes from one of those very interesting generational families. And she is sort of the caretaker of all this art, you know, from grandparents and great-grandparents. Mm -hmm. And she is sort of allowing herself to put some of it up for auction and start she's starting to create her own art collection but we're what we're doing is taking some of her artifacts and and putting them into contemporary artwork so yeah. having um, she has a box of these beautiful Parisian playbills and right. tickets from the 1800s and right. so we have an artist who is incorporating them into a work of art. So there's, there's almost that family history is being kind of passed down so that the, the, the pieces of, of her life are becoming parts of, of people's artwork. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm working, it's funny that you mentioned my work because I'm, I'm working on a piece that's a mosaic. <coughs> Excuse me, that's a mosaic piece and what it is is my grandmother was, did a lot of tile work. She did a lot of all these, and we found in the, the bowels of our house somewhere this box of these antique tiles. Wow. And they're gorgeous, and they're heavy, and they're beautiful. So I'm starting to use some of those at, to do a little mosaic thing for the front of the house, for the, for the yard. That's so Because we said, what are we going to do with these? Well, we can donate them. I said, you're not going to give my grandma's stuff away. So Janice and I said, well, let's make some. Right. So we are, and it's going to be something that will forever, you know, be part of our house and, and the community. It's kind of a cool way of doing that. Yeah, I think it's great. And I think because of, you know, the economic times and the recession, people have scaled their sort of lifestyles back a little bit and uh, sort of looking at what's important. And yeah. art seems to be important. Yeah. You know, it's the last thing that's truly original. Mm -hmm. You know, that you can own something that only you have. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make a song, but mm -hmm. a lot of people can have that CD. You know, yes. but that painting or that mosaic or that sculpture is one of a kind. Right. Well, one of the things that, that I think that differentiates between, I mean, music is music, and it's definitely an art, and it's, one of my, it's my craft, and it's, it's one of the ways that I communicate. I consider music to be this international language, you know? But you can hang a painting, and a painting is so personal sometimes to people that it's what they're getting out of it. You know, the music, I'm trying to tell you a story. I'm trying to get a, a thing across, you know. Yeah. But uh, painting and, and sculpture, it's so personal. People just get such it a is. reaction. It is, and one of the things I want to do with my artists, and again, I try to do things better, you know, today than I did yesterday and better tomorrow than I did today, is um, I want to find raw space where we can have shows, where yeah. it can be a show that they create, Right. in their head and then we find the space for it because right. so often we're trying to take a body of work and you know take the square peg and put it in the round hole or right. whatever that expression is and you know I've sort of put everybody to task to let me know what their dream show would be and I'm getting all mm. these great responses. That's great. Yeah it's really That's exciting. We, 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 we've just been asked by the now. mayor's <laughs> office to hang at Scully Square Gallery and uh, we're just so proud about that and it's taken us a bunch of years to get in mm -hmm. and uh, now that we're in there it's we're very excited we're are you in, there now we're going to be there for the month of july and half of august so we'll be there over the summer you and janice me and do well, the rosnell arts alliance so mm -hmm. it'll be janice and i and some some uh curated people that we want to bring in with us you know we'll, that's great we'll, we'll definitely uh, pick and choose i think who who will hang because we only get 30 spots so that's not a lot of that's not a lot of space, but it's it's not bad. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, and I and I don't want to take too much time, uh, because we do want to get get to Joyce, is that uh, public art. We've been fighting in Rosendale to get a piece of public art uh, uh, put up for years now. The process just seems to be so daunting. Is is, is helping an artist with, with, with your experience and, and your in your uh, your connections has has that ever come up? That's that wanting to hang something in in the in the community. Been, uh, been, been something you've wanted to do? I haven't really had that experience yet. It's something that is on the wish list for some of my artists, mm, and we've done a little okay. bit of it's research, yeah. and we've applied to, you know, a different, you know, not just here in Boston, but in Chicago and different mm -hmm. parts of the country, mm -hmm. but nothing's come to fruition. It's such a difficult task. It's such a difficult thing to get, get done. Uh, because there's so many commissions and there's so many people that, well, the problem we're running into is taking so long that 
the commission with that was the, the, the committee that first uh, approved it has changed, or yeah. the administration has changed, and we've had to go and get somebody else. To, so it's almost this circle. Well, I think timing. Boston is definitely becoming more of an arts town. It's more of a food town. It's more yeah. of a theater town than yeah. it's ever been, yeah. and they're doing more public art. You mm. know, I mean, it's Chicago's always had a lot in different parts of the country. It, mm. it, you know, you see it everywhere, but it. it and in fact, there's a piece called The Blue Wave right outside my window on Washington Street. Yeah. And apparently, there was a big dedication by the mayor. I mean, seriously, right outside my window. I missed it. Had no idea oh. it was there, that it was being dedicated, because I'm working away at my little computer. And I missed it, but it's, it's really lovely. Yeah. And um, there's a whole story behind it, which I won't go into right now. Yeah. But it's really exciting to see that, you know, a lot more of that is popping up around. Yeah, it, it is. And the, the murals of the 70s and 80s that, that, that were fabulous are being restored. Some of them are being brought back to the life that they deserve. And uh, it's, uh, it's an exciting time for the city, I think. It I is, mean, it's just, absolutely. Uh, such an artful place. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. It's always good to sit and chat with you. What's up this week? Anything coming up for you? Except for going to that show on Friday out in Norwood, of course. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, 10 o'clock. That's a little late for me. I'm the early bird special girl. So I, we'll Skype in, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, no, I have to get to one of your shows. I, I will try to get there on Friday. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be fun. It's a great restaurant, nice, nice food. People are fantastic. and It's just one of those fun places that we play every year, you know, so it's, it's one of those things. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Listen, gang, I want to remind you that you are watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, and this, of course, is Suzanne Schultz. Uh, we are coming to you live here on Monday night, and if you want to join us, you can give us a call, 617-708-3290. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take a little break, and we're going to play a couple of songs out of the Low Budget Records vault. Uh, for uh, for you cats to enjoy, and we'll be back in just a minute with our very very special guest, Joyce Kohaywick is in the studio. We're very very proud to have her here. So hang in there, gang. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Please don't go away. Thanks. One, two, one, two, three.
Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us, gang. My name is Glenn Williams. We're coming to you live. You're watching BNN, BNN TV's It's All About Arts. We're coming to you from Studio B. You're more than welcome to join us if you'd like it. We're at 617-708-3290. And right now, it's my great pleasure and honor to uh, not introduce you to, but say hello and welcome to the set to Joyce Kilhaywood. Joyce, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> My uh, pleasure. We, we met last time at Tommy Toon's big opening. Oh, that was so great. Wasn't that fabulous? Yeah, he's so charming and tall. <laughs> tall very, very tall. And, and he brought his art with him, which he, was all about the long neck. giraffes. Yeah. What else, right? Gee, I, I wonder where that came from. <laughs> but, uh, but I had the great pleasure of talking for a couple of minutes with him. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I got to speak with you first. And you must have seen that I was a little in you. And, it's okay, go and jump in there. Oh, yeah, fine, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, Tommy is one of the easier people to talk to, I have to say. Right. You know, he's, he's a Texan. He's yeah. got that Texas charm. Yeah. He's very unaffected, and he's really <laughs> literally and figuratively uh, one of the giants yeah. in the industry. He, he you know? certainly is. Oh, yeah. All the Tony Awards he's won. Yeah, the Tony and, Awards. And, and the, one of the awards that I thought was really, really cool was that he was a, he's a living landmark in, in New York. And I thought that was just kind he's of... He's a living landmark? They, the commission has made him... They cannot tear him down without asking his permission. <laughs> 
It's one of those. So things. he can just strut around the city. Everybody's got to get out of the way when <laughs> kind Tommy. Kind of lope around, yeah. But 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 speaking speaking of, of great accomplishments, I want to say congratulations. You've just been been named. You just received a lifetime achievement award. Yes. And and congratulations. No no congratulations. And I hope this doesn't mean it's the end. No, of course not. Because yeah. I am raring to go. You have got so many things on your plate, and the future looks so yeah. great for, for you that that I'm, I'm just couldn't be happier. For well, you. that event, the, uh, which was really tremendous, it was. Uh, uh, I was one of six exceptional women, and yes. of course, you know, all women are exceptional. Absolutely. You know this, Glenn. Absolutely. You know this, I do. and I know all of your viewers know yeah. this, especially. Women of a certain age, you know? We just get I'm not better. Going there. We get better and better and better. And everybody wants to put us out to pasture. No. And it's like, hey, no. I'm in my prime, yes. you know? You're ready to go. Exactly, exactly. Unencumbered, tons of energy, ready to go. No more than I ever knew before. Honestly, I feel, I feel fantastic. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. So I'm one of six exceptional women, and I got the Lifetime Achievement Award. But you know who got the Performing Arts Award? I, who? I can only imagine. Patti LaBelle. Patti LaBelle was there. So this is at the Westin uh, Hotel on the waterfront in front of 800 people. Yeah. So, and, and Patti LaBelle comes up to the stage last. And she, of course, doesn't have any prepared remarks or anything because, right. you know, she's Patti LaBelle. <laughs> After all. And she's going to sing. And people are, like, just screaming because she's incredible. Yeah. And she gets up there, and she, the woman is, like, so loose and wild and yes. crazy. And she goes, I'm a bad girl. <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to just say whatever I want. Oh, my gosh, my throat is dry. Get me some water. And, you know, ten people rush the stage. <laughs> you know. Sure. And then Patti LaBelle blurts out. <laughs> And they did, they covered this in the Globe, which is the only reason I'm mentioning this, okay. because it was out. Because I, I had sworn I wouldn't say anything about it. But it's out. She blurts out that she's going to be a surprise guest on one of the Oprah shows. Oh, really? And as soon as she says it, she says, oh, oh. oh I shouldn't have said that. And her manager, who's sitting next to my mother in the audience, who's also her son. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> is, really? Yeah. He's sitting there rolling his eyes and turns to my mother and says, I am always going through this. You know, it's <laughs> it's like, a con <laughs> she's always on. I, so and she's standing there going, oh no, why did I say that? What did I do? And then she starts singing. And she sings, she sounds better than ever. Really? I mean, she says that, and it's true. Was there a band with her, or did she just let loose? Uh, no, she, there was a pianist. <clears throat> there was a pianist, uh, which is all she needs. And yeah, right. She's singing as beautifully, and her, her voice has gotten richer over time. That's great. It is so easy. That's it's great. like, and she's doing these amazing runs up and down, and then talking in between and doing. She, the woman's incredible. She took over. Huh? She's incredible. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. To share the stage with someone of that magnitude. Oh my gosh, it was. Tells was incredibly only, honored. only tells us of, of of the great career that that you've had here. Mm -hmm. Here in New England and nationwide. I mean, I mean, you've you've been seen in every household around the country, and well, I did, yeah, I did have a nationally syndicated movie review yeah. show. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I did did a lot of things. Always had my roots though here in Boston. Mm -hmm. I love this city. Are you originally from Boston? No, I'm not. I'm actually original. I'm I'm a I'm a a Connecticut Yankee, right, you know, right, so I'm right. a New Englander through yeah. and through and came to college here, went to Simmons College. The Simmons, right. And from the minute I came here as an aspiring 17 year old, I just felt like this was my home. I yeah. love this city Boston's and I always have. I yeah, it. I think it's great. And as Suzanne was saying, and you were saying in the last segment, the city is better than ever. Yeah. I mean, there's more of everything here. I think it is the most undiscovered gem in the country, and that is the truth. There's so much here. I mean, world-class theater, world-class ballet, world-class music of all kinds. I mm -hmm. mean, from the symphony to rock and roll. Yep. I mean, all kinds of dance from, you know, from modern dance, oh, hip-hop dance, dance Boston amazing. ballet. Extraordinary. I mean, we've got world-class museums. We've got young artists. We've got mm -hmm. movies being made on our streets. Right. It's an extraordinary right. place. We almost don't have enough audience to, keep, to support keep. what's here. That's That's why we've got to get the word out. Absolutely. I mean, you know... There should be bus loads and plane loads right, of people headed for Boston. One of the things that I, I tell my kids, because I, I partner with the MFA, they come out and they do some, some art programs with some of the kids yes. that I teach and stuff. One of the things I tell them is I say, no matter where in the world you are, yep. if you're standing in a room with 10 people and you say the word MFA, mm -hmm. eight of those people are going to know exactly what you're oh, talking about. Absolutely. You know, and that's You just say BSO. They're going to know the exactly what The world knows what we're talking about. Knows. You say Boston Ballet. Yeah. That's now a world class company. Yeah. 
It's all here. It's all here it's in all Boston. Here. Yeah. Do you have Do you have a preference as far as the the, the I, you cover such a vast array mm -hmm. in, 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 of, of art? Is there one where you, where you actually kind of get a giddy up in your in your in your step to get to go to? I really love the you know all the performing arts. I have to say. Gosh, anything dramatic really appeals to me. Okay. Um, I love, well, I mean, I love the opera. Okay. We have a big opera conference going on right now yep. in Boston, Opera America. In fact, I just emceed the big opening last night. Yep. This was really cool. How'd that go? It was amazing. We had 400 people from all across the country and around the world. At an, opera com at an opera conference that was held for the first time in our city. It's going to be here through Wednesday. So we had about 400 people in this gorgeous gallery at the Museum of Fine Arts. I mean, marble walls and floors and gorgeous paintings from floor to ceiling, and the ceilings are 30 feet high. Yeah, that's good. And you know what they did? They started the program with a flash mob opera. Did they really? They yes. just broke in. So a guy, a gorgeous young tenor, jumps up on a chair, hoists his glass, and bursts into Carmen. You know what I mean? Was, and then two, you know, sopranos leapt up on theirs. And oh, before you know it, there were people from all sides of this room filling, filling this, this gorgeous room with sound, with opera. It was amazing. That must have been it was great extraordinary. To so experience. you know, that's just one little thing. But right. you know, so I love opera. I love the drama of that. I love the songs. I'm half Italian. My mm -hmm. grandmother used to sing those songs, like you know, like they were pop songs. While she was cooking, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love the movies. I love the movies. We know movies. you love the movies. You're I a do. big movie fan. Yes. I love the movies, and I love going to the theater when it's great theater. Mm -hmm. You know, when theater is bad, it's really, really bad because it's right in front of you. And when it's great. It's transporting right. like nothing else. Will, will, you, will you read some of, of, of the articles before you go, or do you like to? Oh, I don't like to read. Own, no, I don't like opinion. to read anybody else's opinion mm. until I go and have my own experience. Mm. And actually, uh, this is what I always would tell people, and I still tell them. I have a blog now where I still review things. Don't read my stuff or anybody's stuff until you see it for yourself, and then go back and read what other people have said because. You know, nobody can dictate what's right. good or bad. Right. All we can do is have a great conversation about right. what we saw. Right. You know, and and I love that stimulating conversation. Right. This right. is always what I'm trying to do: stimulate ideas and thoughts about this arena and what it says about our lives. Did I learn something? Did I not learn something? Was that just a pile of you know what? Yeah. Or did that really tell me something? Did that just entertain? Or did I get a real insight there? You right. know. Sometimes kids, if they've never been to the theater before, see a whole world in front of them that, that they never saw before, that they suddenly see that there's something possible and larger than themselves. It's very exciting. Right. But don't let critics dictate. They're just there to stimulate you, you know? I, I, I'd like to I'd like to That's believe true. I'd like to believe that. But I know that there are some critics, not you, but I know there are some critics that kind of look for that thing to say. Oh, you mean just to be critical? Yeah. Well, you don't want to know, we're goaded on by the public. People okay. love it when we're nasty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what Troy said? Yeah. People love it when we're nasty. It's not good to be nasty for nasty's sake. Yeah. But when something's really bad, you've really got to call it as, as, it, as you see it. Right. You know, I mean, you need to do that in a respectful way. Right. But if it's really terrible, right. that, I mean, that's my currency. Right. I can't. Say something's good if it's if I don't really think it is. You don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to agree with me. Right. But if you're looking to hear what I have to say, all I can do is genuinely tell you what I really thought. And then some people use that as a reverse barometer. They know if I loved it, they're going to hate it. Oh, really? They know that if I hated it, they're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've I've gone to shows and, and and then I've read you know some reviews afterwards. And I say, ah, this guy was this person even at in the, the same, same show? Were they watching right. the same show because? Either I'm missing something, or I've taken something entirely different from this professional right. person right. away. But I don't well, think. Well, I do think that there are informed opinions. I mean, you know, critics have seen a lot of work right. over time, and usually that's a good thing. Right. Sometimes critics get very jaded about what they've seen, and right. it's hard to have the fresh experience. Right. But Suzanne um, and I were talking earlier yeah. about about how a painting or a piece of music can affect. You diff entirely differently than it affects me. Yes. You know, and I think that a performance can too. I mean, there may be a character in that in that play or or in that movie that I take some personal connection to. True, but beneath that is, did the person give a believable performance? Oh, that's the. You know, I mean, yeah. if the character resonates for you, great. But if I couldn't keep my mind on that character because I saw the guy acting. Yeah. 
uh, then I'm distracted and I'm right. pulled out of the work and right. I'm not in it. I right. can't be in it. Right. Um, during, during Holy you know. Week, my mother and I, my mother's up, I, I was mentioning, and she'd, be, she'd watch every passion movie that there was. Right. And every now and then I'd come in and she'd be watching one, and I know that these people are just, that's a terrible acting job, but she's yeah. just, you know. Hey, if it works for you, fine. Yeah. No one's saying don't do that. Right, uh, right. We're just saying if you're, gonna, if you're looking for quality, if you want that kind of aesthetic assessment, you know, there's room for that. There's, there's a place mm -hmm. for that. And there's some things that are art. Yeah. You know, not yes. just when it's more than the sum of its parts somehow. Mm -hmm. It's almost hard to define, but you know it when you see it. Mm -hmm. It's transporting, and you're having an experience that's extraordinarily elevating. Right. Yeah. One of the, one of the arguments, not arguments, I guess, one of the discussions that, that I, I run into a lot of time is art, when does the craft become arts and crafty? When is it? A fine art, and I'm of the. Oh, mind. I don't know. I, I'm of the. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. You weren't going to help no, me. Well, there's no an answer to that, as I say. Yeah. You know. Um, I feel that if you create it and it's something that you're passionate about, it's it's art. Okay. There's an art. You're entitled there's, there's to that. Art, there's an art to it. I'm not talking about yeah. glue and glitter. Which I don't allow glue, <laughs> glitter, or beads in my classroom. Get them out of well, here. I don't know. You could be artful <laughs> with those things, though. Yes, you know? I know you can. And Tell that's it to my Badgley role. Mishka, who yeah, designed some of the most glittery gowns that ever were. And some of them are trashy, and some of them are lovely. Yeah. There is a museum, though, that we have in Boston called the Museum of Bad I know art. where it is. It's I've been there. Fantastic. Isn't it great? Fantastic. <laughs> I had to do a piece on that once, and it was so, f I was laughing so hard I couldn't even get through. You know, I must have done 10 takes yeah. of this thing. And you call up, and they go, Museum of Bad Art. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The same tone. And I first Very started laughing. Lady. And it's not art that means to be bad. This is what's so funny about it. It's art that sincerely means <laughs> to be good. And and then something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah, right. Well, I've got a pile of those at home. Believe me. You know. They have a piece there. It's a woman in a field, and it was for the longest time, I think like their mascot or was on the cover of their catalog. And I remember looking at recognizing that, wow, that wasn't very good. And then suddenly I saw what it was that it was trying to be yeah. and what and how, where the artist hadn't been able to achieve that because he or she didn't have the technique and I just remember bursting out laughing the woman was supposed to be sitting in a chair yeah. but I couldn't tell what she was supposed to be doing because her body was kind of crooked and then I realized oh no no, no, she's supposed to be sitting in a chair in the field. <laughs> and the guy couldn't get the perspective. Couldn't get the he couldn't get the sense of a body occupying space and sitting on this. So it was hysterical. And suddenly, and suddenly they pointed at me and they said, she got it. She yeah, got it. Yeah, it's OK. It well, that's me, good. It took me a minute. You know, it took me a bit. I, I, I'm of the uh, we're, my kids are three to nine. Yeah. So those are the kids that I teach. Yeah. I, you know, so they're little well, kids and I just... For a kid, any, I mean, for kids, for anybody, you've just got to jump in and put your heart and soul there. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, this is the beauty of teaching the arts yeah. in school, of exposing kids, because it teaches kids to value and nurture their unique voice. Right. And sometimes there's nothing... You can't express certain parts of yourself any other way than either by dancing it, singing it, drawing it, painting it, playing it. Right. I remember covering a story on a group of uh, kids who had perfected some hip hop routines and were competing in a big national competition. And I was interviewing them and they said, you know, we're not just putting on a show. This is our life. Mm. And these were kids who had said to me, if they weren't in this program, they might be in a gang, they might be on drugs, they had no place to go after school. This wasn't them putting on a show. Right. This was their life. Right. And you could see that their heart and soul was in this performance, right, right. which was more than a performance. And they also had the technique to back it up. They were kick-ass yeah, dancers. Yeah, I mean, they, they were, sure they were yeah. amazing. I mean, they got right to the top of this competition. Um, but that said a lot to me about you know, what art is and what arts mean to people and what, what an art form does for a person. Right. I also think it stimulates uh, incredible compassion because if you're nurturing your own unique voice, I think you then come to respect the unique voices of everyone around you, right, right. that they're all different, they're all special, and they're precious, right, you know? Right. So, well, I, I, I yeah. know that in my life, art, has, art and music has been a savior for me. I mean, I grew up in, in Roslindale in, in the late 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. 
when a person of color was not living in Roslindale. Mm -hmm. So I, I know, and I, I used a lot of, of, of my passion with music and, and, and drawing and painting as an outlet to get uh, something out of me to, yeah. to feel to feel good about something exactly you know and exactly and, and that and that I know that works with kids all the time music it was just so big in my life you know yes. I mean I was the kid that was sent down to the auditorium to set up the chairs <laughs> you know in the fourth grade so I get into the activities room and I'm plunking away on the upright bass and sister Cornelius walks in now of course I think I'm about to meet my maker because she's about to you know have at it right she taught me for six years after isn't that, that and just Good for so, sister Cornelius. Cornelius. Yes. She, she saw got it. She understood you. it. Yeah. She saw you. Yeah. How phenomenal. This is a real teacher. Yeah, a real, real woman. She was yeah. a phenomenal woman. And yeah. it was a great experience for yeah. me. And, and I'm sure that's happening all over the country. Yeah. The unfortunate thing I see is that we're not nurturing as much of that in our younger well, educational system as we need to. Yeah, I mean, you know, because everybody's very tight with a dollar the, now, the you know, is... it's very tough and the arts are always the first thing to be cut, yep. the frill to be cut, yep. and you know, we probably need them more than we've ever needed them oh, before. No question about it. Yeah. Is there still a piano in your house? Oh, yeah. You still play? <laughs> oh, I love to play the piano. <laughs> I took piano lessons and tap dancing <laughs> lessons and I was, I was actually my parish church organist and soloist yeah. and, you know, I'm going to get a chance to use a little bit of that great this coming Wednesday oh. because it's opening night at the Boston Pops yeah and I you're playing no 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 nothing as good as that oh. nothing as bad as that I should say. <laughs> oh no 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 I got a phone call from the BSO they said would you be willing to be on stage and help Keith Lockhart lead a sing-along for the sound of music and could wow. we dress you up as Maria Von Trapp <laughs> I said could you <laughs> are you kidding I know every what song. time do I what time should I be there every, I know every song every little inflection I know. Uh, hi, what a hell! There's a lonely goat here. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. They're not going to ask you to yodel. Uh, I know. Yodel, 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 yodel. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. People right? are now fleeing their living rooms. Never. Yeah. No, yeah. no. They're trotting that down. Yeah. But so Wednesday night, Boston pops. Fabulous thing That's in the great. city. Yeah. You know, these are some uh, some amazing gigs you're getting. Oh, please. It's, you, it's you, been nuts. It's been absolutely crazy. Let's step back to the blog yes. thing. Yeah. Let, let's. Um, how do people get? To be part Just of that. go to JoyceKalhaywick.com, mm -hmm. and it's not fully launched and out there yet. I don't have a ton of followers. I've just been kind of discreetly doing this mm -hmm. uh, to see if I liked that format. Mm -hmm. and what I've discovered is that I have a different voice on my blog, yes. and I have more latitude. I'm not just boxed in on the TV. Right, right. It's more, uh, I think, more who I really am. Okay. Even though I've always pretty much myself on the air. It's taken me a long time to relax into that. Yeah. But, um, but on the blog, it's yet even a different voice. So I talk about, oh, I talked about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. I talked about the royal wedding and the royal idiot, as I called Mr. Trump. Well, you, Trump. you get to make your opinion. <laughs> it becomes personal. Well, it is. Well, my, uh, that was always what I did on the air. Well, pretty much when I, when I would give my reviews. I also did feature stories where I, I would let the artist speak, and then I'd have my say, you yeah. know, uh, at a different time. But on a blog, I have different subjects that I will talk about. I mean, I talked about Snooky, who was booked at Rutgers to speak right. for $32,000. All right, what is that woman going to say that is worth <laughs> $32,000, you know? And they said, well, they wanted people to understand that at Rutgers, they aren't all just, you know, dying in the library reading books. I said, yeah, you know, there's been a rash of that lately, bodies <laughs> in libraries from people doing too much reading. I mean, this is insane. Yeah. So I called that blog Snookered. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. The technology now has come, mm -hmm. and, and you've experienced this amazing change mm -hmm. in technology. Um, years ago, we wouldn't have known about the incident in Pakistan for maybe a, several days. Right. Now it is so immediate and so instantaneous. Well, it, it's not only that it's instantaneous, because we've had that for a while. It's community building, and this is what we saw in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have every reason to think that Twitter and Facebook played an enormous part in collecting people, aggregating not just information, but getting people to, to talk to each other and right. come together right. to foment a change yeah. there. I yeah. mean, this is powerful. When Mark Zuckerberg was named Person of the Year and they said Facebook had changed 
you know, the face of the planet. And some people were disputing that. And then this happened. I'm thinking, no, I don't think we overstated no. what that technology means today. People used to say <coughs> it was isolating because everyone was just in front of their screen typing. And I never believed that. Mm. In fact, it is community building. And people can find each other from all parts of the globe yeah. where they never would have found each right. other before. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. It, it, it's very exciting. I've discovered several half-brothers and sisters that <gasps> I never knew I had. See, now, isn't this unbelievable? <laughs> it's like, you know, incredible. Good for you. Yeah, yeah it's kind have of Have you cool. met them? Yeah, I've met some of them, yeah. Oh, wow. And now, let me you tell wouldn't you have something. done that otherwise? I wouldn't have known that. We were, one, of the, one of them I met down at the Boston Common. And yeah. from across the pond, the, 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 uh, the skating pond, yeah. he was on one side and I was on the other side. And I saw him and I knew exactly. Are you kidding that, me? That who he was. And, and he looks over and he goes, Mr. Williams? Oh, <laughs> my gosh. And that's it was the most amazing experience. Thrilling. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, so I mean, that's Because what, what's a connection online then can lead to face-to-face -face right. connection. Right. And sometimes you can say things to people online that you can't yes. say an yes. immediately. You can edit a little bit, make sure, you know. One of yeah. the fears that I do have, though, is there was that several tweets that got by during the early days when, over in, in Egypt that, that, that uh, uh, that Anderson Cooper was was injured. Right. That there was some kind, and like right away I went, oh my God, this is this is insane. This right. Is now crazy. Right. Which it was cleared up relatively quickly, 45 minutes. But you know that's but, not unique to technology. I mean, there's always been a rumor mill, a yeah, gossip mill. Yeah. There's always been misinformation, whether it's through people talking to each other on right. the phone, on the party line, right. or over their backyard fences, right. or in the newspaper, right. or you know. Only now it can get it gets out there, disseminated really big, and then it can get cleared up. Almost I just, just want as I fast. just want to make sure that I do say that people yeah. just take everything with well, and, and do a, your research. It's a tool. Yeah. You know, is. I mean, still this technology is a tool. Right. And and you need to know how to use your tools. Right. I mean, period, the end. It's, exactly. not, it's not evil. No. People used to think TV was evil. No. I never thought that. I love television. I love <laughs> there's TV. a lot of garbage on TV. But there's a lot I'll of I'll weed my stuff. way through it. There's some amazing stuff. A lot stuff. of great stuff. In fact, there's, there's like sometimes even better stuff on TV now than there is at the movies, mm -hmm. which isn't yeah. saying a lot. GBH is doing a great thing right now where they're, where they're having people who have been experienced doing their promotion stuff and talking about their story, mm -hmm. about how they learned something on GBH. And there was... It's just been some amazing stories mm -hmm. about people learning about their culture, learning about themselves by something they've experienced on GBH. Right. Can we talk a little bit about the American Cancer Society? Sure. Uh, you are an incredible survivor. Three times. Three times survivor. Yeah. Um, I had malignant melanoma, uh, which is a skin cancer, mm -hmm. and ovarian cancer mm -hmm. twice. And these are very uh, difficult, deadly cancers that once they're out of the box are very difficult, if not impossible, to recover from. Right. So that I'm sitting here with you, Glenn, yes. is unbelievable. Oh, and yeah. the doctors have actually said to me they could count on the fingers of one hand how many people fall into this category. Well, we're very happy. So I that. feel like uh, my part of my karma is to get this disease, get over it, and tell people about it. So yeah. i got to write the book, don't yes, I? Yes, you yeah. do have to write the book. And, and I, I hope that with everything else that everybody else is putting their stuff behind, I sometimes wonder if cancer has kind of not had that kind of stage oh, no. that it belongs. No, I think absolutely everybody's, the disease is so epidemic, particularly, yeah. you know, breast cancer. Yeah. And, you know, I think everybody's very well aware. I hope so. And I think people talk about it now in a way that they didn't, certainly, when I first started talking well, you about it, it was 20 the big C. Ago. You used yeah. to call it the big C. You, you didn't know? talk about you that. Talk, yeah. Too scary. Yeah. And it was automatically a death sentence. Yeah. This is not the case anymore. Right. More than 50% of everybody who is diagnosed with cancer will recover from cancer. That's fair. That's and every single day, there are more and more inroads being made on how that disease can be attacked. It's right. been approached uh, from the point of view of genetic engineering, uh, starving some of the... Um, the, the blood cells that go to the tumor, uh, giving vaccinations. I mean, they're, they're trying Back to attack this. All, thing. Kinds yeah, all sure. different kinds of ways. Sure. And the information is flooding in. Yeah. More and more people are working on this. But it's not just one disease. No. It's a lot of different diseases. Right. And if I could say anything to your viewers, I would just say you need to try to catch that disease as early as possible because it is the single biggest prognosticator of how you're going to do, yeah. how early you catch that, right. which means you got to be brave and pay attention to your own system, uh, yep. symptoms, yep. be willing to go to the doctor, 
You guys, I'm you going, know, I'm going the you 17th. don't like to go. I know. I'm over 50. I'm going the 17th. <laughs> I won't tell you why, but use your Good. own imagination. Go. Yeah. No, you have to. Go. I mean, it's hard to get men to the doctor, number yeah. one. Yeah. You can get women usually to the doctor, but they won't challenge their doctor. Mm -hmm. Ladies, challenge your doctor. If you're getting some kind of um, information back where they're saying, oh, don't worry about it. It's nothing. Come back in six months. We'll take another look. Mm -hmm. No. Right. Get a second opinion. Find out what that lump or that bump is. Is. Find out, right? Yeah, if you can get to the bottom line, because mm. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of people who waited, then came back, and then it was like uh, the cat Should've was out here. of the bag. So doctors are not perfect; they do make mistakes, and you need to believe your own self. I was misdiagnosed every single time. Like really? Every time, I had to insist that no, I'm not okay. I think you're wrong. Something's I'm wrong getting here. yeah, something's wrong with me. Because we live in our bodies, we know them better than no anybody else. No one knows else. better. Yeah, exactly. It's true. You just got to be And speaking of this, speaking it. of this great city, a lot of this his heroic and, and historic work is a nine nine away from where we're sitting. We are in like the medical capital of the United States. Yes. I mean, you know, no it's incredible, and it. in the world, yeah. there are people who come here from all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I've been actually very instrumental in a in a program called uh, that is sponsored by the American Cancer Society. They create something called Hope. Lodge, and it's where people who have cancer who have to travel long distances for treatments that they can only get here, mm. they can stay at Hope Lodge for free yeah. with their families. Mm -hmm. it, this is a gorgeous it's like place. like the Ronald McDonald House. It's, yeah, and they look, it looks like a luxury hotel. Mm. And, you know, it's right at the end of Huntington Ave, and it's uh, at, in Hope Lodge Square. I yeah. think they've now renamed well, that's it. Great. Hope Square. Hope yeah. Square. And that's, uh, like, I think it's filled all the time, but you just call whoever, first come, first serve. It's yeah. that kind of thing. But what's the ACS a, will know about that. What's in the future? What's up? Oh, my your, gosh. Your great blog is coming up. Wednesday, you're going to okay. be with the... I'm going to be with, with the, the Pops. The, the Pops yeah, the Boston Wednesday. Pops on stage. What have I got? The Elliot Norton Awards huh? are coming up May 23rd. That's like the local version of the Tonys, the uh -huh. best in theater. I'm going to be emceeing that at the Paramount Theater. Uh, what else have we got? The Boston Lyric Opera is doing a huge... Uh, no, the Boston Lyric Stage Company is doing a big gala. I'm going to be a celebrity reader at that. You know, it's uh, all the summer stuff is coming up. The summer movies are coming out. The restaurant week, you know, it's... Do you go to any of our open studios? I haven't been. Boston has some great hey, open studios. Hey, get me on your email. Oh, oh, any of Boston's open studios? Yeah, I've been Rosendale's to a few. Rosendale's an incredible yeah, I've one. Been to a Jamaica few. Plain, the South Not End. Not to a lot. I've been to a few in the South End. I'm going to get on your blog and I'm going to invite get you to Rosendale. Get on my Rosendale. email list. Okay, I yeah, will Yeah, let that. me know. Choice, thank you. I wish I could clone myself. <laughs> No, I, I, I want to be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here and honoring, honoring us with your, and with you your know presence. What? And thank you. You're a great interview. Oh, stop. No, no, no kidding. You're you know, I was a little nervous to today. To. I've been doing this for 15 years. I was a little so nervous. Funny. <laughs> well, I didn't show. And he, he's great. You're a great interviewer. You very You're very easy to talk to. And I thank you for having me. No, thank okay. you. Stay it's tuned. It's a pleasure everybody. to be here. Thank you. Listen, gang, thanks an awful lot for being here. What a great show tonight. I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. Uh, tonight's been a great show. We've had a lot, a lot of fun. And listen, like I like to say, get out there and do something artful with yourself, okay? Get out there to a museum, catch a show. I'll be out in Norwood this Friday playing a little music, some of my love songs with my mates. So come on out and join us. And like I like to say every week, please keep in the forefront of your minds our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews on foreign soil. Please get out, do something artful, do it for them. They'll appreciate it. I can guarantee it. Thanks, gang. Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Bye-bye. Joyce, I forgot to say Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you later, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>